Hi everyone, so I wanted to make a, a video um, on um, Dan's comments regarding, um, I guess, the vaccine rollout, how um, it, you know, certain countries are lagging and the really the effect of a lagging um, vaccine rollout will potentially affect um, a, an economy, right? So, and in particular, we were talking about the, the dollar and the uh, the CAD, right? So, one of the things that we have to always, um, I guess, keep in mind, yeah, is who is the dog with the least fleas, yeah? And so, the vaccine rollout, yeah, the vaccine rollout is the expectation of that is linked to GDP. And the reason why and GDP growth or GDP um, contraction. And the reason why that is is because the vaccine um, is obviously, I wouldn't say necessarily a cure for the coronavirus, but it will reduce the spread of the coronavirus. And so if you're reducing the spread of the coronavirus, the, the thinking is, is that the economy can get back on its feet. People can get back to work. People can interact, you know, and then the more people are getting back to work and some sort of normality, then GDP, you know, should should grow. That's pretty much it. So the, the, so the thinking behind it is the more, you know, you're vaccining and vaccinating people in your country. Um, then you know should lead to higher growth. If you're lagging behind, then obviously the the virus still has a chance of spreading, etc. So it should lead to potential, sorry, GDP contraction. Right, that's the thinking behind it. That's the that was the trade idea. So back in November, right, November of 2020, right, when um, Os Oxford Ax AstraZeneca, um, and I think what's the other one again? Um, Oh, I can't remember the other vaccine now. It's gone from my head. But basically, when the vaccines were really, were, were really starting to, um, were kind of being released, and, and the UK were, you know, kind of like ahead of the curve when it came to, uh, and they were ahead of everybody. The idea was that the, because the market is always future thinking, yeah, the market is always future thinking. So the idea was that um, the UK being ahead of everyone. Yeah, the expectation, yeah, it's kind of by the rumour, sell the facts, but buying the rumour that the effect of um, the UK, you know, managing to start their vaccine programme first and get everyone vaccinated pretty much before everyone else would be in the head of schedule would increase uh, GDP because obviously, as we know, you know, they'd be back, back to some sort of normality sooner, right? Now, of course, there are, it's not, it's, we, we really have to kind of not, um, take everything as gospel in a sense that there's no there's no certainties yeah this is just a probabilistic nature yeah so if you hear something like that don't just assume that that's exactly what it's going to be there's always going to be you know hurdles and, and you know slips trips and fumbles with you know the vaccine rollout they all potentially could be yeah so even though the uk was first doesn't mean that they were going to be successful right but the idea of it is that you have to roll with is if they are successful then this should happen should typically you know it's a probabilities game is likely to happen right those are the the, the kind of that's the kind of mindset you need to think about now <clears throat> On the, obviously on the list, we're looking at, you know, the vaccine rollout as an idea for GDP growth, yeah? So when we were looking at the, you know, the UK and the pound, um, this is the reason why the pound is, um, you know, going higher and higher in, in price. It's because of the expectation of GDP growth. Now you've got, you know, for example, the US, you've got Europe, yeah, the EU, you know, you've got Canada, <clears throat> sorry, CAD, you've got Australia, etc., New Zealand, Japan, um, and, and so on and so forth. But the 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 um I guess the focus really that that Dan was, you know, kind of um made me making the point of is is that he was looking at the divergence between the US and Canada, so the dollar CAD. Yeah, so when we're trading and looking at the dollar cat, 
he was he was obviously looking at the um, the, uh, the the technicals and saying that well you know we've come down to a certain point and it looks like potentially we should want to you know go to you know the the upside and the reason why is because uh, the Canadian dollar um, potentially is lagging the or is lagging the uh, the US when it comes to uh, the vaccine rollout now yes that is true yeah. But the question then becomes, is that the best divergence? Because all we, what we're always looking for is the strongest divergences, meaning you want to trade the strongest versus the weakest currencies because that is that is potentially where the bargains are. That's where the trend is going to be. Because if something remains strong, yeah, and something remains weak or continues to make remain weak and struggle and depreciate it, etc., then you, all you want to do is just keep buying the, the 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 appreciating currency yeah now there are levels of divergence right there are levels of of divergence and so what we want to do ultimately is we want to try to look for you know the the the, the where where currencies are diametrically opposed so let's take for example the, the dollar yeah versus the cad and we want to outline all of the divergences, yeah? Divergences meaning where one is growing, the other one is contracting or do it going the other way, right? So let's say, for example, you know, vaccine rollout. In the vaccine rollout, yeah, um, yes, the US is ahead of the Canadian dollar. But is the Canadian dollar really that bad? Yes, they are lagging, but is it enough to, you know, um, uh, to actually say, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's affecting their GDP, right? For me, it's not. The reason why is because if we actually look at GDP, yeah, the GDP numbers, you know, quarter on quarter, then, um, in fact, I think the, the dollar is, I think, like 4.3 was the final figure, and the Canadian dollar was something like, you know, 2, I think that's like 2.6 or something like that, yeah? So yes, even the, the the dollar is 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 ahead of, of Canada, but it's but they're still growing, right? Compared to where they were in the in the third quarter, yeah. This is fourth quarter data, yeah. Q four, four Q. I've written it backwards, but you know they're they're both growing from where they were from their previous negative. Uh, GDP, so they're one day they're growing still, yeah. And then you've got things like inflation, interest rates, and what you're doing is just comparing the um, uh, the data, right? So, can you see really a lot of divergence? Okay, other than the lag in the in the rollout, and it's a lag doesn't mean it's going in the opposite direction. They're just maybe just a little bit behind. Is that? you know, enough to say, all right, then the dollar is well, you know, undervalued at this point and we should have a trend in the medium to long term, medium to long term, meaning, you know, maybe, you know, three to six months, six, six months to 12 months kind of time, time horizon. Cause that's where, that's where we want to kind of look towards. We want to look towards those type of time horizons. Yes. We look at short term one to three months as well, but even in the one to three month period, is that enough for, you know the, the the dollar CAD to really start to move up. You know, um, a certain amount of pips, right? And, you know, hundreds hundreds of pips. Now, of course, it could. Of course, it might not, right? But it's it's harder to tell. It's it, for me, it's harder to tell, especially when you bring in or when you bring in, for example, Europe. Yeah. So Europe, and so Europe, on the other hand. Um, when it comes to the vaccine rollout, they are struggling. They are definitely behind everybody, and they are struggling with the vaccine rollout. In fact, you've got you've got Germany going into lockdowns, and certain parts of Europe going back into lockdown. Canada isn't going into any kind of lockdown, but certain part of countries in Europe are going into lockdown. So that is actually negative, yeah. And then you've got GDP, which is I think it's like negative zero point is it seven or something like that some somewhere in that region right so you've got in fact you know talks of a double dip recession in europe etc etc right so and the same thing you know with inflation they're lagging behind when it comes to inflation interest rates right interest rates i think the us is still at zero point is it two five i think canada is still zero zero point two five as well percent uh and europe i think are at zero percent so again 
when you're looking at the divergences, going back to divergences, when you're trying to pick pairs, yeah, and trying to discover pairs, it's not, to me, I can't look at a chart and say whether that's a bargain or not. It doesn't, you can't tell whether something is a bargain or not um, on a price chart. Just because prices are trending down, for example, yeah, it, for me, it could trend down even even longer because fundamentals and risk sentiment is what drives price. Yeah, you're just seeing the result of price after understanding the fundamentals and the risk sentiment. Yeah, this is not, you know, when people say you know price action is king, it really isn't because price is constantly being manipulated, especially on on the shorter term. But on the longer term, you can't really manipulate price right for too long. You know, prices are being manipulated for liquidity. For there to be, you know, more buying and selling, and to draw traders to taking the opposite position to, you know, the the, the, the financial institutions, right? That's where why we have, you know, stop hunting, liquidity hunting, etc. But in the long term, the banks know exactly where they want to be, but they may have to manipulate the short term, yeah, in the lower time frames, and all the day traders and the five minute, you know, ten minute, half an hour traders who trade typical technical analysis. It's manipulating the prices down there, but overall, it's the reason why we consistently pick the long-term trends, yeah, because we understand where the market is going to go. Not all the time, of course, not one hundred percent, because it's not, it's not, it's never clear one hundred percent. But when it is clear, you have a high probability, you know, of you know the market moving in that direction, yeah. Um, and again, the market's not always going to be clear, right? It's not always going to be this is, you know, this and this is that. And when the market isn't clear, then just don't take that trade. But going back to divergences, yeah, and the divergence, when you compare the dollar, right? So you want to be a buyer of the dollar for now, right? Just for now, because obviously data can change. Now, when you compare buying the dollar against what the, the, the Canadian dollar or, or um, the euro, you have to look at the bigger divergence. Which is the bigger divergence? And for me, the bigger divergence is obviously Europe, yeah, rather than Canada. Because even though again they've got a, they're lagging on the rollout, they're not even close to being, um, you know, going back into lockdown, etc. They're not lagging behind on the economic data either. So when picking the best pairs or the pairs the easy trades as i like to call them there's lots of easy trades out say lots of easy trades but there's easier trades out there and what we're looking for is the divergence the easy trades yeah the canadian dollar although price may do what you want it to do in the short term it may not and the probability of it you know doing it is decreased if you if there are too strong or too weak currencies yeah You've got two strong weak two weak currencies. It's difficult to tell. So, an analogy of that: if you're into any kind of sports, yeah, would you rather take a bet? Yeah, if you had, if you had, a, if you if you were betting on a football game, for example, or you know in America they call it soccer, right, or any kind of sports game, and you knew that you could, you know, had the same odds, the same exact odds, yeah, for betting, putting money and betting on the best team versus the worst team or two or the top two teams or the top uh, or, the, or the bottom two teams which one would you put your money on you'd put your money on you know the, the on, on the match where um, or the game where you've got you're putting your money on the best team yeah versus maybe the worst team which is maybe number 10 yeah because you instinctively understand that the odds are in your favor yeah whereas why would you why would you you know, put money on, you know, a, a team or a match or a game where you've got the top two teams and you're trying to figure out who's going to win out of the top two teams. It makes no sense. Why do that when you can just basically put your money on this, you know, the top team versus the bottom team and get the same odds, get the same odds. In fact, you're probably getting better odds, right? Because you understand the probabilities of what should happen. Yeah. So, that's the way that I look at it. Yeah, is that you can't just look at this in in, in a uh, look at something technically and then think, okay, that's where am I going to find the trade or look for the trade uh, fundamentally and try to justify why you should be buying after you've looked at, the looked at the technicals. You should do the fundamentals first, and this is just my approach anyway. Of course, we can all, always arrive at the same um, uh, 
destination. But the point is, is that if you do the fundamentals first, yeah, then for me, you can filter out the technical noise. You can just go straight to the charts that you want to go to after doing the fundamentals. And then those are your trades. Yeah, which is the reason why on a, you know, on a, on a, a uh, on a Saturday, you know, when we have our fundamental analysis calls, um, you know, we go through the pairs that we want to trade, yeah? So we do the tabs, right? And we go through it, we mark out the tabs, go through the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, you know, click the direction we want to trade, whether we want to be a buyer's green, seller, and then that's it. We don't focus on any of these other pairs fundamentally because either they're strong versus weak currencies or we're just unsure fundamentally where the long-term medium to long-term direction you know is going right so that's the way you know that that to to, to approach it so um the vaccine molar idea is starting to now come to i think a bit of an end it may have obviously some legs for some trades obviously with the euro dollar etc but at some point the euro are going to get their act together aren't they yeah they're going to get the vaccine rollout won't be so much of a divergence anymore yeah so um yes there is lag the uk and the us is leading europe which is the reason why you're seeing um you know uh Euro pound, for example, go to the downside, which is basically, you know, pound strength. You're seeing Euro dollar go to the downside, which is dollar strength. Um, you're seeing Euro CAD go to the downside, which is CAD strength. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 all driven by fundamental analysis and risk sentiment and understanding where the easy trades are, where the strong currencies are and where the weak currencies are. And um, once Europe does, you know, figure out, you know, and get its rollout going and they start to grow again, then that divergence is going to become less and less. Yeah. So as a trade idea, it's not something, you know, it may be for the foreseeable future, or maybe for the next, I don't know, I don't want to put a time frame on it, you know, one, two, three months. But there's going to come a time where every country now is going to start to grow and then that trade idea would have been done now we've been trading this trade idea since november right and capitalizing from it so um at some point trade ideas do come to an end yeah um, some trade ideas last for years for example some trade ideas last for a couple of months some trade ideas can last for you know a, a couple of quarters you know three six nine months etc who knows but um Going back to just understanding and wrapping this video up, just understanding divergences and understanding where and what countries are potentially strong, what countries are potentially weak is where you should be focused on because that is where, those are where the trends, you can identify the trends. Um, but great um, discussion and really um, uh, good questions, Dan. And uh, yeah, Mark, I totally agree. Just, you know, strong, obvious strong versus weak currencies, etc. Yeah, and um, yeah, um, great. It's it's really good that you're that you're um, you know thinking about these things and being interested in it because you have to have an interest. If you're not interested in the fundamentals, I say this to people all the time. If you're not interested in fundamental risk sentiment analysis, you just won't get it. It would just be really kind of boring to you. But if you're you know interested in this stuff and really trying to figure out how you know it it, it works, um, then you will start to see. Um, things will start to make sense, you know, slowly. It's not um, something that you can, you know, you'll just grasp straight away because there are a lot of moving parts, but there are general rules to, um, you know, fundamental analysis and understanding really just where money will typically flow into depending on the environment, whether we're in a risk on environment or whether we're in a risk off environment. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I just wanted to make that video for you and, um, and uh, yeah, well done. Keep up the great work. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in tomorrow's um, uh, group call. Um, it's going to be a good one, I think, and Thursday as well. So um, we'll be really kind of go over entries and understanding um, and really some risk management. So guys, take care and I'll speak to you all soon.